the topic is on faith like we have heard about faith so many times in uh, religious ways right so this one is slightly uh, different so let's go to hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and uh, vernika can just read for me hebrews 11 1 it says now faith is confidence in what we hope for an assurance an assurance of about what we do not see so in other words it says faith is seeing things that we don't see with a, he's talking about we what we don't see with our physical eyes so if we don't see with our physical eyes then how do we see things a mind yeah a good another good yeah if we can't see things with our physical eyes then we are seeing things in a imagination and that's what it's saying is faith faith is seeing things in our imagination now something is not existing but it is existing in the will always exist in imagination so if you read the whole thing can you read the whole scripture so it says what is what you are seeing was never made out of what was visible but by faith, by faith okay that's secondary but whatever you see in this world never manifested because it was visible whatever we see in this world was first manifested before seeing it with your physical eyes that means it was in the realm of imagination and so what is faith is faith is having imagination point number 1 that's what hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 says you are seeing things not physically but you are seeing things in the realm of your mind mentally okay and now being faithful to what you see in your mental realm is actually called faith being faithful or loyal to what you see in your imagination is faith right so all the saints of the old testament they never see saw things and they believed they believed in the unseen things which they saw in the realm of their imagination and therefore if you see abraham he had faith in god that made him righteous in other words abraham was loyal to his imagination so what do i mean by saying loyal to your imagination that means something is in your physical realm something is not going right according to how you want it to go but if you still persist imagining the desired result that it is this what i believe that will manifest so what is faith so that's why we walk by faith not by sight in other words we walk in the realm of imagination believing in our imagination and trusting our imagination and even though in the natural if it is not coming to pass we still believe what is there happening in our imagination if we keep doing that then it will come to pass 
So go, here the scripture is saying everything that was created was created actually from not the seen, from not the matter, but it was created from the unseen that is actually unseen by the physical eyes, but seen in the imagination eyes. The source, therefore, so the question arises, you know, many a times we see Jesus saying, Father, Father, Father. Right? Who is the Father? Who is the Father? Why does Jesus call God as Father? Whom do we call a father? The one who creates, right? Out of him, the child come. That's why he is the father. So if there's a baby, why we say Anthony is her father is because he is the source of her creation. That's why we call him father. And so because God is the source of creation, we call God the Father. So now, tell me, who is the source of actually creation? Who or what? Yes. The source of all creation is imagination. And so who is the Father? It's man's own imagination, which who is the father? Are you with me? It's man's own imagination who is the father. Because out of the imagination comes the creation. And the, so the source is imagination. Are you understanding? So we're going to have some time of discussion. It's not going to be I who are going to share all the time. But we're going to share, we're going to discuss, we're going to ask questions. So all things exist, all things exist in the eye, in the mind's eye. Agree with me? Everything exists in the mind's eye. Do you have a, do you, do you have a house, a, a, a villa? Do you have a villa? No. Close your eyes. Do you have a villa? In your imagination, yes, you have a villa. So, you think what you don't have, you say, I don't have this, I don't have that. You close your eyes and you start seeing it, you have it. Where it is? Here, in your imagination. So, everything exists in imagination. The Bible says, there is nothing impossible for God. Right? There's only one, in one area that everything can be possible. Which is that area? Imagination. So if I ask you, can you fly, you will say, no, I can't fly. But if I ask you, can you imagine to f that you can fly, you will say yes. So what was impossible has become possible in the realm of imagination. That means God is something that or someone where everything is possible and imagination is the only place where everything is possible. Right? So who is God? <laughs> Your men's Imagination, my imagination, is God. So, who are you? You are that God and you and I are need to awaken ourselves to realize this truth that I am God and the whole purpose of Jesus on earth was to tell you that you and he are one, as he and the father are one. Who's the father? Imagination. <laughs> he
he was saying, I and my imagination are one. And if you and I are one, you also should know that you and your imagination is one. And so faith, faith is being loyal and being faithful to your own imagination. Faith is believing all that you imagine intentionally is going to be fulfilled in my life. That's what it's care. If you believe all things are possible, that's what Jesus said to whom? Lazarus was dead. He said, if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. Believe in what? Believe in your own imagination. Believe in that God who is your own imagination. Now when I'm talking about this, it looks a little bit... It, 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 it cannot be digested. But that's what Jesus was trying to say. That's what the apostles were trying to say. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is talking about faith. Faith is something that you believe in that you don't see with your physical eyes. But you can see it in your mental eyes. With your mental eyes. That's faith. So if I ask you, that's why God is again and again saying, don't put your eyes on earthly things. In other words, things that you are seeing physically, don't just believe in that. But let your mind be focused on heavenly things. What are the heavenly things? Here, imagination. Let your eyes be focused on the heavenly things. In the things that your imagination, your desires, you imagine. Be focused over there. So, what happens is, suppose something is going wrong in our life. Are we supposed to believe in that thing that is going wrong in our life? Or are we supposed to believe in something that we really desire? The right thing that I desire in my life. Tell me. The right thing that I desire. And that's what the Bible keeps on saying. Don't believe in the worldly things. Don't believe in the things that you see physically. Start believing in things that you see. The unseen things. Are you with me? Start seeing the unseen things. So Jesus comes and says, my father is, my God is my father. But your God, your father is the devil. But who is this devil? And who is the father? Now, if you see things physically and believe on those physical things, the worldly things, then you, your father is the devil. Because your source of creation comes from what is happening logically in the earth, on the earth. So, this is my education. This level is my education. This level is what I am supposed to earn according to the logics of the world. This is my education. This is how I am supposed to earn. This is how I am supposed to die. Who has defined that? Who has believed that? I have believed that according to the logics of the world. So my creation comes from the logic of the world, from the patterns of the world. And Bible says, if that is so, that is your, cre your father is the devil. That's the world. Because your creation, the source of your creation is coming from the world. But my father is the source of creating that what you have not yet seen. 
Where does it come from? That comes from our imagination. So when things are not going right in our life, are we supposed to believe and trust in things that are happening with what we see with our naked eyes? Or are we supposed to trust and believe in our imagination? You understand? And so, once you understand that, that your and my imagination is that sacred source from which all creation comes, even forgiveness becomes easy. Because now, I'm not living according to what has happened in my past or what's happening in my present. I'm living from what really I want things to happen. So what I want things to happen, I believe it has already happened. That's forgiveness. Example. Suppose she has done something bad against me. But now I don't react to her according to the physical thing that happened in my life through her. But I react to her according to what I imagine. That's forgiveness. Forgiveness, the true meaning of forgiveness is forgetting, correct? I'm forgetting is the true meaning of forgiveness. For example, the reason why we are suffering now is because we are not forgiving and we are not forgetting. Forget what? Forget what? You are the result of who you are right now is because you have not forgotten certain things in your life or forgiven certain things in your life. Example, in 2015, I met with an accident and I broke my leg. Till today, I have issues with my leg. I have, no, I have issues with my leg today because I have seen the accident, I have experienced the accident, and I believe in that accident, and till today I have issues with my leg. So I have not forgotten what happened to me in 2015. But if with my imagination I start imagining and believing that actually I did not meet with an accident. I'm strong, I'm running healthy, I'm, everything is fine. What have you done? By forgetting your memory of the past, you have forgiven yourself what happened in the past and today if you have forgiven and forgotten, you are healed. That's what Joe Dispenza did. His entire backbone had been broken. Right. What did he do? He started visualizing his entire vertebrae by vertebrae completely healed. Completely as he wanted. So he remained faithful and loyal to his imagination. The world or the situation around him keep telling him, hey, you are never going to walk. Doc doctors told him, you are never going to walk. You are going to be on wheelchair. And the world kept telling him not to forgive, not to forget, not to create a new memory. But he insisted in meditating and creating his own new memory. Right. The moment he created that, he saw and he be became very faithful, very loyal, very persistent to that memory. He got healed. Clear? Right. Am I making sense? Right. So it's very important to what we imagine. And more important, 
that we are loyal to that imagination. So many a times what happens is we have certain time of meditation, right? So I'm going to meditate 20 minutes every day. So that minute I'm imagining certain thing in my life. The moment the 20 minutes are over, I'm back to thinking the old patterns of my life or the worldly patterns of my life. So it says, do not fall into the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what the scripture says. So 20 minutes I'm forgetting, no doubt, but the remaining time I'm going back to the same pattern. That means I imagine for 20 minutes, but the remaining time, what am I doing is, I'm not faithful or loyal to that imagination, to that visualization. So, if you really understand, this is actually every Christian unconsciously doing. And we give them spiritual terms. But the truth is, everyone is imagining. And we say, brother, have faith, brother, have faith. When we say to somebody, sister, have faith, brother, have faith, God will heal you. Right. What is that guy really imagining? He's imagining he's getting healed, he's getting healed, he's getting healed. Whether you're Christian or not Christian, now you have to understand, if you only imagine and remain faithful to that imagination, you will get healed. It's not Jesus who is, who is outside there, who is coming and healing a person. There are times where Jesus is saying, if you don't have faith, I can't heal you. There was one whole place, he said, these guys didn't have faith, I could not heal anybody. God or Jesus, that religious religion has taught us that Jesus can't heal us. The only person that can heal us is ourselves. The Christ in us that can heal us. There is only one Christ that exists. That Christ is existing in you and me. That's what the scripture says. Christ in you is the hope of glory, not Christ outside you. Right, brother? Christ in us is the hope of glory, not Christ outside us. What does it mean? You know, three, two years back, I, I think you also was asking me this question. What does it mean? We, we, we say it with so, so much of excitement, Christ in me is the hope of glory. But today I realize what does that mean? When it says Christ in me means the glory can come only because of me. I am the source of that glory. I am that actual Christ. If there is, there is no Christ outside of us, we all need to understand that. Scripture is clearly saying that Christ is in you. St. Paul says, I know not, I don't know him by flesh. I know not any man by flesh. That means, St. Paul is saying, I don't know that Jesus, or I don't follow that Jesus who was in flesh. St. Paul is saying. We are all supposed to know the Christ that is within us, inside of us. The Christ who is inside of us. And any Christ that is outside of us or anybody who preaches a Christ who is outside of us is not Christ. In fact, he is an anti-Christ. Because there is no Christ outside of us. Christ exists in us. If there is existence, that existence is God is Christ and that Christ is existing inside of us and the whole message of Jesus was for us to get awakened to know that God is in us and we being faithful 
or loyal to our imagination can create miracles after miracles in our life. Am I making sense? Yeah? So there are only two things that displease God. Two things. Right? What are the two things that displease God? Uh, just read that. Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah, yeah. There's something that displeased God there. It's written. Oh, yeah. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. What is faith? Being loyal to imagination is faith. If we are not loyal to our imagination, we can't please God. In other words, nothing can manifest in our life if we don't be loyal to our imagination. If we keep believing in things that are happening outside with what we are saying, seeing, then we are not loyal to our imagination. Second thing, God in the Bible, it says, what displeased God was man eating from the tree of good and evil. That means, every time you are looking at things and saying, yes, this is right, this is wrong. You are becoming very logical. This is how it should be. This is how it should not be. Right? So we are again focusing on the things of the earth. So if we say, if I throw this, it will come down. If I throw this, it will come, come down. I am eating from the tree of good and evil. Because this is the knowledge. If I throw this, it will come down. That's knowledge I have. I'm eating from that knowledge. But Jesus was literally defining all that knowledge. So he said, everybody is saying, if you, hey, if you jump into the water, you're going to drown. You're going to drown. Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm going to trust my imagination. I'm going to walk on water. Disciples come and say, there is no food. There are 5,000 people. Jesus says, there is food. Father, I thank you. He give thanks and start distributing. He give thanks to his own imagination because he believes in his own imagination and he releases gratitude because he knows if he visualizes the right thing, be faithful for it, that will happen in his life and manifest in his life. Every miracle happens. Every miracle happens when you're faithful or loyal to your imagination. If you are not, even Jesus says, I can't heal you. There are thousands of people touching Jesus, none of them getting healed. There's a lady who was suffering from bleeding issue, says in her imagination, if I touch him, there will be healing that will come into my life. So she has imagined a healing, she has imagined a process, and she's faithful to her imagination, so she she goes against all odds, touches the hem of the garment of Jesus, and she receives healing. Where was the healing? Not in the hem of the, of the garment of Jesus. Where was the healing? Not even in Jesus. The healing was, if it was Jesus, the healing, if it was in Jesus and the hem, there were thousands who were touching Jesus. They would have got healed. The healing was in her being loyal to her imagination. You see? She imagined this is the process I'm going to receive healing. She remained persistent in the process and she got healed. Sometimes, 
a guy comes and says, Jesus, this is my servant who is dying. Jesus says, okay, go, he will get healed. He doesn't say, take the hem of my garment. He said, I believe he's healed. And then he moves away. Half the way he comes to know he's healed. So how did he get healed without the hem being touched? Because this guy in his imagination knew that the process of healing for him in his case, in his case, the process of healing, if Jesus just speaks a word, he will get healed. So he spoke a word, he got healed. According to the man's process, believing in the process, how the healing will happen, it gets healed. So where is the healing lies? In that man's own imagination. Therefore, you see, everywhere healing is mentioned, all the healings are different. Somebody is blind, his, Jesus is putting mud and spit. Healing is not in the mud, nor the spit. Healing is the, in the belief system of that guy. Probably the blind man thought in his imagination, if Jesus touches me with his spit and mud, he will get healed. So he believed in that process and he received his healing. In another instance, once this lady touches the hem of Jesus, you see in the other gospel, it is mentioned, now everybody who touched Jesus, the hem of Jesus got healed. What happened suddenly? Everyone started imagining that if I touch the hem, I will get healed. So they are basically, through their imagination, they are programming their nervous system to get healed. And they get healed. So healing can happen in n number of ways, depends upon how you want that healing to happen. So if you are imagining, I will take this tablet, I will go to the doctor and then I will get healed, exactly like that it will happen. If you are imagining and you have programmed yourself, I will say one prayer, I will get healed. That is how you will get healed. How do you imagine? And how loyal are you to this imagination that you have in your mind? Is what will bring creation in your life and my life. The result of my finances should be not in what I see in my bank or what I see as what my work is or my status in the society is. The result of my finances is what I see in the realm of my imagination. Are you understanding? The whole plan of God, the, the story of Jesus is about God becoming human. So that humans are awakened to know that humans are God. That's what it is. So he became human and he died on the cross as human to say that human imagination, that lower mindset is finished on the cross and now you can access the unlimited consciousness, the unlimited way of thinking. Because man's mind was veiled by religion. Man was the religion taught men, hey look, in order to be blessed, you have to kill thousand goats, cows, whatever. It was veiled. 
Jesus comes and says, hey, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to do all that. I, if I can do it, you can do it. I and you are one. As he is, so I am I. And that veil got broken. And so, Jesus was saying, hey, just imagine, believe, be loyal to your imagination. You don't have to kill thousand goats, cows. So the death of Jesus on the cross was actually breaking the veil that was created by religion in our mind. And Jesus broke, tore that veil which was there so that we can now just access our imagination and see the results of it. Is it making sense? Yeah. So yeah. All we need to understand is We are called to harvest or reap benefits. We are not called to sow. We are not called to plow. Sowing, plowing has been done by God himself. And now we just have to have the benefits of what has been sowed and plowed. So we are called to receive the harvest. The end times that, that the Bible talks about is a time of harvest. End time is not a time where everything will be destroyed and you will be thrown away. End time is a time of harvest. Harvest means to see manifestations in our life. To believe in the finished works. In the finished works. So, what are we supposed to imagine? Imagine that you already had things. If you imagine that you had things, for example, you are praying for finances, if you imagine you want finances in your life, you don't imagine that I want that money. You imagine that my parents were rich and they have left lot of inheritance for me. Can we do it? Close your eyes and just imagine that your parents were the richest people in your locality. You see, Harsha is smiling. Suddenly the vibe changed, right? Just imagine, your parents were the richest people in, the fam in, in, the, in your locality. And imagine, they have lot of inheritance for you. Now you're not imagining for finances to come. You know there are finances, there are unlimited resources in your life. Are you feeling better? Just, and they are saying to you, you know, I'm going to give you all this inheritance. What a smile, I see such a glow in you. <laughs> right? Now what you have done is, in the physical realm, in this three-dimensional realm, your parents might be the misers. Yeah. And they were supposed to, and you might be having deep down unforgiveness to that situation. And because of my parents today, I am like this. 
But now you have forgiven your memory, your past, and you have recreated or rearranged your memory, and you are saying my parents were the richest. Simple exercise like this, trust me, by next week you will come here with good money testimonies. You'll come here next Sunday and saying, you know, I, I don't know how, but money came into my account. I don't know how somebody came and gave me money. I don't know, I don't know. All you have to do is rearrange your memory. Right? That memory that you have created saying, my parents were rich and handing over me a lot of money, that memory, that memory is your father. <laughs> that memory is your father God. That father God is creating a creation in your life and my life. You understand? I need to imagine my parents were, had a biggest church in Goa. And so now it's coming to me. I'm inheriting it naturally. It's getting handed down to me. And that feeling and that imagination will produce the result in your life and our life. Now, I want you to sit down and really see this whole religious thing that we've been doing at a very deep level. We have given that religious terminology, but this can be done by anybody, whether you're Christian, whether you're any other religion. Because the father, that is imagination, is the father of all. Everybody can sit and imagine. Right? Makes sense? We're going to, I'm going to call it off shortly and then we're just going to do a small workshop that will help us to imagine better. So, in all this, this is what I want to s speak to you about. When you, we are imagining, we have to imagine in such a way that we are receiving it as somebody is giving it to us with love. Like I said, parents. And secondly, imagine that all this thing is coming to you and people are getting jealous. These are strong emotions, right? People are envying that you are Rich. That's what happened to Joseph. There were two emotions very active in his life. One was the love of the father. The father. And when I say father, I'm you put it I'm putting it allegorically. And second was envy. Envy of his brothers, envy of Potiphar's wife. But these two emotions were the key reason for him, for Joseph to go to the pit, to the prison, but ultimately to the palace. You understand? So see, love is in yourself. See, if we don't love ourselves, we cannot love somebody else. Simple. And how do we love ourselves? Because you see, every time I say, she, I'm, uh, what do you say? Suppose you go to a mall and you say, this is not worth for me, it's so expensive. I can't afford it. It is like you are expressing no love to yourself. This is, I can't afford it, you know. 
So if you say I deserve this, I'm I'm not worthy. That's correct. Yeah, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy means you are saying that I don't love myself. You are eating from the tree of good and evil. But the moment you say I'm worthy because I love myself. Everything in the universe loves myself. Everything is love. and i'm worthy to take it right if we have that kind of mindset you will see that that what you need will come to you you don't need to go after that but religion has programmed us right from childhood saying you are a sinner you are not worthy you are not this religion has taught us to eat from the tree of good and evil yeah program to earn that i have to work very hard to get blessed right i have to work very hard to get blessed then people who work manual labor they work from day to night why don't they earn like you and me then we might be earning we are might be working not hard as them right finances is actually not about your physical hard work finances is about your mindset whether you and i are faithful to i imagination so every time we will come across physical things that are happening in our life but if we agree with those physical things we are disagreeing with our imaginary things so we are not loyal to our god we are unfaithful to god and we are faithful to the devil which is the earthly things devil not the spirit with horns with the earthly things and so when two agree on one thing that gets manifested right so what is happening with my physical eyes if i agree with that that will keep getting manifested in my life but if i agree with my imagination and i say i'm seeing let's say a big car and i say i'm worthy of that car and i agree that i deserve that car and i see myself i'm driving that car i will receive it it will manifest it will be created in my realm of three dimensional realm but our focus if it is on oh my status i am just middle class i am middle class family i belong to middle class family i don't belong i don't deserve this i don't des- you are agreeing to the things of the earth and not things above right you are agreeing with your situation that is happening i want you to bring to your mind one situation that is happening in your life right now that you do not like so there's difference between not liking and disagreeing one situation in your life that you don't like maybe it is a health condition financial condition some other issue in your life you don't agree to uh, you don't like it now think about whether you agree with that situation or you disagree with that situation if you are disagreeing with the situation then i want you to agree with the ideal situation that is there in the realm of your mind what's the ideal situation according to you agree with that the ideal result agree with that and don't give in to that what you're seeing in your eyes
right so when you want to get married you want to get married right when after 4 years no after 4 years 3 three. 3 so t- 2023 24 25 but yeah probability so 2025 let's say okay with with everything right now in your life do you think you're going to get married in 2025 everything happening right now in your present life you think i got the boy and all okay then it's a wrong question to you <laughs> so suppose you had not got the boy i'm just trying to show you how to imagine what you would imagine is prophesying <laughs> if i were you i would imagine i met this boy this me i just 3 days back i in we are f- completely in love and everything is finalized and the card and all is printed i would feel the card i would see on the cra- ca- card the year where i am getting married and bring in the feeling and feel it because that is actually faith okay so now you have imagined all this and you have imagine the ideal situation now suddenly like hindi movies or bollywood movies there's a villain who has come now maybe the mother or the father or somebody else and said no i will not allow my son to get married to you or oh, ex boyfriend or oh, he is a ex girlfriend okay she's come and it's saying now now what you have imagine it's exactly opposite is happening in your physical eyes in the physical realm how do you resolve it yeah so when something like that happens what your reaction to that will always be according to what is happening in your life right you will start reacting you will start uh, getting anxious worried but if you that that anxiousness that worried that you're becoming that is becoming then it's like becoming disloyal to your imagination and the moment you're disloyal to your imagination that is not faith but if you say okay no problem i know i'm going to get married see abraham got his only begotten son so because only son and now he is and god tells him go on the mountain top of the mountain and sacrifice him at the down of the mountain he is telling his servant abraham is telling his servant that we will come back my son and i will come back so abraham is walking with his son to sacrifice but all the way from down to top he is not succumbed he is not victimized by what is told to him that he needs to sacrifice 
this guy is imagining that he is going to come with his son back. He is not fixing his eyes on the three-dimensional thing, what is going to happen. He is fixing his eyes on what is going to go in his imagination. Ah, I am going to go up and I am going to come down with my son. I am going to go up and I am going to come down. He's nowhere is shown that he is worried. There is no reaction only. Right, Anthony? Exactly that's what happens. And God says, this is faith. Faith is being loyal to your imagination. Even then, when circumstances are coming into your life, you are not getting victimized by those circumstances, but you are knowing that what you are imagining will surely come to pass. That is faith. So, no matter how many billions come in between, you are still smiling and saying, Oh, my wedding card is going to be like this. <laughs> and my honeymoon is going to be like this. It's going to come to pass. Because now you are faithful. You can be like Abraham. Everything is fixed. Suddenly the mother says, No, you can't get married to him. So, rather than going and fighting with the mother, you are faithful or loyal to your imagination and saying, keep, you tell the mother, you keep fighting, but your son is going to be ultimately mine. <laughs> right? That's what is faith. And that's what we all need to have not being succumbed to what we see but being faithful what is there in the unseen, unseen realm that is our imagination.